welcome to the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Today on the channel, we're going to take a look at another revelation under the Captain's Voice series. And this one is going to be a reference to God's glory, the glory of God, and how God will allow certain circumstances, certain situations in the earth uh, presented through an individual and, and through their life in order for him to get glory from their life. So the first story I'm sent to to actually um, talk about the revelation is the book of 1 Samuel. And it's the story of Hannah. Okay, and we start with 1 Samuel chapter 2 and it begins that Hannah prayed and she said, My heart rejoices in the Lord and my horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. So that is also a part of salvation. That is a, the glory of God is a part of salvation because what from whatever situation, whatever circumstance you may have been birthed into that was bad, uh, more than likely it was a very impossible situation. God truly declares and declares decrees out of his word that he can make the impossible possible so in this story Hannah she couldn't birth any children and she was the wife of uh, as an Elkanai and he couldn't uh, he had two wives he, she was one of the wives and the other wife could have children but Hannah couldn't have any children so the Lord gave her victory over that and saving her from the mockery that they mocked her because she couldn't have children and he actually gave her children, made the pos the impossible uh, possible for her in her life. So then it goes on to verse 2 here, still in 1 Samuel chapter 2. Verse 2 says, There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. So then she tells her enemies, Talk no more exceeding proud about let not arrogance come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. So she's saying that, you know, she's telling her enemies because the wife, the other wife and her children, they mocked Hannah because she could not have children. And so she, you know, got real boastful toward Hannah and proud because, you know, she could have children and she knew Hannah couldn't. So now she's saying, you know, you can close your mouth on that because verse 4 says, uh, the bows of the mighty man are broken by God, and they that stumbled are girded with strength by God. For they that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry seized. So that the barren has borne seven, and she has she that has many children are waxed feeble. Because, verse 6 tells us, the Lord killeth and maketh alive, and he brings down to the grave, and he brings up. For the Lord makes poor, and he makes rich, and he brings low, and he lifts up. So it is him by his power, his might, that all of this can be done. So you could be high one day and be brought low. You could be alive one day, and you could be, you know, gone. Then You know, if that's what, the, however the Lord sees fits to do it, I should say. But he is the one that can do it. And um, so then he says, he raises up the poor out of the dust. He lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. So here it tells us here that he'll lift up the poor so that they will inherit the throne of glory, the beggar. He will lift that individual up to be a part of his kingdom, basically. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. And he will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail, and the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces, and out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. For the Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength to his kings, and he shall exalt the horn of his anointed. So Hannah, we see, she was of the anointed, because the Lord did exalt her above her enemies, how they had uh, mocked her because she couldn't have children, but then God gave her a womb so that she could birth children and then her son Samuel we're reading in his book where he was uh, considered to be an honorable person before the Lord and the Lord chose him uh, to reign and rule and to uh, be before and part of his kingdom 
and then therefore he wrote he has two books which is uh, first samuel and then second samuel from that so but we don't see any other book from the other wives the other wife that he had we don't see any book by her children so you see the exhortation that the lord gave to hannah because she was mocked and treated mis, uh, mistreated by those that could have children at first but the lord exalted her and giving her a son that is an everlasting glory to the lord because of the holy bible and the fact that he has two books written based on him okay so now uh, i'm led also over into the first uh to the new testament to take a look at some of the other uh, instances where god's glory shined through the life of an individual and uh, it was actually because he allowed that circumstance in their life so that he could get glory because the same way with Hannah, she was born like that. She couldn't have children. Her womb was closed. But when she, when the Lord opened her womb, he gave, you know, therefore she was able to give glory to him because no one had uh, ever had their womb opened prior to being born with it closed. But Hannah was among the many or the one that did i should say so the next book we're going to take a look at is john we're going to take a look at john chapter 9 where there was the blind man this man was born blind like stevie wonder and we see the glory in him how he plays the piano he's i always think of him because that's a powerful story within itself his whole life and his uh being here on earth is such a powerful testimony of the glory of God also and how he's such a genius with music and the instruments that he played, the piano and the harm, uh, harmonica and he just made such beautiful music in the earth so we take a look at another story where there was a blind man in uh, the book of John chapter 9 and let's see here we can start with verse 1 it says Jesus passed by uh, he saw a man which was blind from his birth, okay? And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus told them that uh, neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifested in him. And he says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, and the night comes when no man can work. For as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Okay? So then he goes on, verse 6, he says, When he had thus, when he had got done speaking all of this, he spit on the ground and he made clay and uh, spit of a little saliva and he anointed the man's eyes. Okay? The blind man's eye with the clay. And then he told him to go wash in the pool. Okay? And so once he went and washed in the pool, then he was able to see. Okay, so there we see here, and you can read throughout the rest of this chapter if you would like to and see the story. But we can see where the impossible, because it was impossible for him to see, because he was born blind, but God made it possible for him to see through by the power of Christ Jesus in the earth. And the same way with salvation and Christ coming into the earth for mankind. Okay, we were once impossible uh, with our relationship with the heavens and with God. But once Jesus Christ came into the earth, he made it possible for us to be one with God. He made it possible for us to have his Holy Ghost. He made it possible for us to be saved because of the bad sins that we had done, which would cause enmity with God, which would cause a division, a division with our Creator, our Holy God. But Christ Jesus made, Jesus made it possible for us to be reunite, reunited back with our Heavenly Father and to be one. So there was many... Uh, possible that Christ Jesus came into the earth to make happen so uh, again looking at some more stories we can uh, elaborate from that is Mark the book of Mark uh, chapter 9 and that one also Matthew Mark chapter 9 and uh, verse 23 where Jesus Christ tells us to hear he lets us know, Jesus said, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. So if you can believe that it can happen through Christ Jesus, then it can happen. 
but you you know we got to have faith and we got to believe that he is able to do that which doesn't look like can be done because he can make it do what it do so uh, another scripture I'm led over to is Luke uh, Matthew Mark Luke and these are all books in the gospel Luke chapter 18 and then uh, in this 18 verse 27 there's another confirmation here he said the things which are impossible with man they are made possible with God through the power of the Holy Ghost through the power of Christ coming into the earth we go from being what is impossible a terrestrial being to being a celestial being a part of heaven through by the power of Christ Jesus and coming to earth and leaving with us the Holy Ghost the comforter the Holy Spirit the heaven okay uh, let's see here taking another look into Matthew Matthew chapter 19 Matthew 19 he reminds us again in verse 26 Jesus beheld them and he said unto them with men this is impossible but with God all things he says all can you imagine that all everything that you might think that is not able to happen it is able to happen with the holy God of heaven if you believe Christ Jesus he is able to do it he made the blind man see he made the dumb man speak that could not speak born mute not able to speak but because of the glory of God he was able to speak and because of the glory of God a man was able to see because you know even though the circumstance might not look good that you're going into he can change the circumstance from from being a uh, impossible circumstance into a possible circumstances and make things happen for an individual that may not look like they could ever happen just like what Hannah who she didn't look like she could have children or would ever have children and then even Sarah in the Old Testament uh, was Sarah and Abraham because they couldn't have children at first but then God told Sarah when she would have a, uh, you know a child and waited on that when well, she didn't wait actually they tried to when they did produce a child prior by the maid which was you know where they lost you know faith a little bit but didn't mean that God didn't say he was going to still do it and he did do it and she was able to conceive even though she didn't even believe and that's something he did even though she didn't believe she doubted but nevertheless God still because he prophesied to her and he told her that she would uh, give birth let's take a look at that's in Genesis and that's again with Sarah and Abraham, uh, let me see here. Are we able to pull that up right quick? Nevertheless, she did conceive. And God said to Sarah, thy wife shall bear a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And here we are in Genesis chapter 17, verse 19. Okay, and he says, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him so here we see that promised child that promise of possible when there is a situation that looks extremely impossible God is able to make it possible all right so that is our revelation for today and our encouragement that the Heavenly Father is able yes he is in the mighty name of Christ Jesus and now we're going to petition heaven on behalf of that ability that he is able to make the impossible possible. As he stated in his word to Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Christ Jesus, there are some saints in the earth that need some situations turned around that look impossible for them, dear Heavenly Father. But you know what you can do and you've done it so many times throughout history in your word and you showed us, you confirmed the fact that you can do it. We have faith in you, O oh Heavenly Father, that you can do the, the possible, the impossible, that whenever there's a situation that is impossible, you can make it possible for that saint that is in your kingdom. And we ask you right now to turn every situation around, that every individual on this that comes on this video 
that hears your revelation regarding your glory, Heavenly Father, so that you can get glory. We want to glorify your kingdom in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. And so we ask you right now in Jesus Christ's mighty name to make everything possible that has been impossible in our lives. In Christ Jesus' name, and we thank you and we praise you because you are the almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we thank you in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Hey, God loves you, God bless you, and I will see you as we continue to go forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel.